But yeah, for me, patriotism is like, it's situational almost. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me a wiki wiki. Okay, that's fine. Hey guys, Tezzy Faye here. How is it going? It's been a minute. I know you've not seen my face in oh, three months. Some of you are happy about that. Some of you are like, oh, that's, that's not enough time or the opposite, whatever. As you can see, my background has changed. I was moving and so this is just a work in progress. It's happening. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be alive, alhamdulillah. So today's video is gonna be one of those kind of like podcasty talking videos where I just discuss a topic um, and talk about my experience as well as, you know, maybe a list of things. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that being a third culture kid is kind of a major theme within my videos. Um, whether I'm talking about comedy or, not comedy, it is something that gets touched on. And for those of you who don't know what a third culture kid is, I can just throw up a definition here or something. But basically, you know, I immigrated to the US when I was probably like two or three years old. So I grew up in a certain culture that was different than the culture that my parents grew up in, but I was still kind of raised in the culture of them as well. Oh my God, that was so intense. It was just a water bottle. Don't come for me. I do use plastic water bottles. This is Texas. Welcome, howdy y'all. Yeah, so I talk about the topic a lot and I feel like it's kind of just a theme in my life in general. And I'm gonna be turning 31 in September. So I feel like I'm at a place in my life where there are certain things that I've kind of just come to th terms with. So the first thing that I've come to terms with is you're not gonna find all the answers. And sometimes going looking for the answers, looking for some sort of answer just leads to more questions and it's kind of a never ending cycle. So I've come to terms with the fact that it is always gonna be a confusing thing for me and it is what it is. And this is who I am and this is what the, you know, this, these are the circumstances in which I exist and it is what it is. And I accept that part. Cause I think sometimes we, look for an answer so that we can feel at ease or feel okay or settled or have some sort of identity that makes sense. And if you are a third culture kid, you're just not going to. So I made this video for YouTube Creators for Change, which was like a visual essay, stop motion animation type thing. And it was based on an essay that I wrote when I was probably like 15 or 16 years old. And a lot of the things in that essay still apply to me today. But, you know, as I read the comment section, a lot of people really related to you know, what the essay was about. And essentially, if you haven't watched it or if you don't want to go watch it, it was basically about how, you know, I grew up in a post 9-11 America and, you know, I felt a lot of things growing up. I felt very, I don't want to say unwanted, but I felt hated. I felt like I didn't belong here. So I was going back to Pakistan after 10 years thinking that it was going to be a trip that, you know, everything would make sense all of a sudden and I would feel at home and and I was just like so excited to see my people, whatever, right? Basically what my experience boiled down to was I just realized that I'm not really Pakistani either. Like I don't really fully fit in there either. I'm not, you know, that there there is no place. And so it's still true. Even on a trip that I went back in 2019, I felt the same way. So you go looking for these answers and you don't really get what you want and you're just kind of more confused and than you were in the first place. Like I remember it took me so long to make a conclusion for that essay. Like I wrote a conclusion and then when I made the video, I redid the conclusion because the original conclusion I was like, I don't know. Cause there's no conclusion. You know what I mean? I can't conclude because well that's kind of ironic because I'm making this video, but like it just there's it makes no sense. <laughs> okay. For me it's been complicated. So maybe for some people they don't really think that hard. Well, I do. So it is what it is. But I do think that there are some questions that will be answered. So for me personally, when I went to Pakistan, it's not that I didn't get any sort of understanding of who I am. I will say when I went back as an adult, most recently in 2019, you know, I had never been to Peshawar as an adult. I think I had been to Karachi as an adult, but like this time I was even older, right? I was like 28 years old. And I, I felt very different going back because I feel like I understood my, it helped me understand my parents in a different way. I, I feel like I saw the world that they grew up in, the culture, and I, I had a different understanding and empathy for my parents in a way that I didn't before. And so in that sense, you will get some answers, but it doesn't resolve any everything. Because I remember, you know, I was ready to come back home. And when I got on the plane back home, I again was reminded, you don't belong here either, but you do, but you don't because people are staring, like I forgot that people stare at me. So as I was walking down the aisle, I was like, like it just started to hit me again, right? So 
it's going to be this constant like back and forth of you know questioning and always feeling like you don't really have, fully have a place or there's no place that you can fully find peace and that's okay it is what it is that goes back to my point you know you you might get some answers but it might just lead to more questions and that gets into my next point which is something that i've come to terms with and i don't know that this applies to everybody but for me it does so one of the things that i've come to terms with is that my identity is political even just me existing is controversial people hate you just because you exist because again it doesn't make sense that you exist in some ways so for me so what i mean by that is like you know random people telling you what they think about pakistan i'm like i don't really care like I've had some encounters and some things I'm like, yeah, okay. But on the other hand, I also get comments from people who are like, you know, for me, my ethnicity is Pashtun or like at least three fourths Pashtun, if that's right. I think so. Huh? Is it? Yes, it's three fourths Pashtun. And even that is contested, right? You speak to some people, they're like, you're not Pashtun, you know, meow, 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 meow. And then you speak to other people and they're like, how can you call yourself Pakistani? Meow, 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 meow. I'm like, it's because my grandpa lives in Pakistan and that's where I used to visit. And if you tell an American person, I'm from where? Oh, I'm from Pashtun Nation. Hala, hala. Like, what are they going to understand about that? <laughs> I understand that it is political. I understand that there is a lot of history. I understand that there are things that are unfair because on the other hand as well, I also get comments from people calling me, you know, whatever this term or whatever because they're like mm, yeah yeah you know these pakistani nationalists who <sighs> which I'll, I'll get into my next point but yeah my identity is just political it is what it is and there's nothing i can do about it if i leave it up to other people i'm gonna go crazy because people are constantly defining what your identity is and you don't really have a say in it like you can say it for yourself but people are always going to project onto you and always say things and there are things that are out of your control that still impact you. And so that has been my experience and that's something that I've just come to terms with. So that brings me to my next point and that is about patriotism. I feel like either there are people who are third culture kids who really cling on to some sort of patriotism, whether it be of their old country or their new country, or you really don't understand it, you don't get it. I mean, you might get it, but you're just not about it. I fall into that second category. I don't really feel super patriotic either way. I wouldn't call myself a nationalist in any sense. Part of it is just because I feel sometimes rejected from both. And so I'm like, why would I be patriotic towards lands or people or stuff that that doesn't love me back? Why would I show, you know, that's like a one-sided love. That's how I feel. Maybe that's not what patriotism is about, but it's just not something that I really feel either way. It's not to say that I'm not, I'm ashamed of who I am. Like I, I would, proud is a strong word but like I never shy away from stating that I'm Pakistani I never really shy away from being American I guess in a sense like I know I'm American but yeah for me patriotism is like it's situational almost yeah <laughs> makes me a wiki wiki okay that's fine and that brings me to my next thing that I've come to terms with you know there's always going to be a divide between you and the people of your home country and this might go back to like being the, the thing about your identity being political. But for me, you know, I can give you an example, like, you know, with all the stuff that happened recently in Pakistan with Imran Khan, for example, I saw posts circulating, going around being like, if you're in the West, shut your mouth, basically. <laughs> right. Or like, if you're a Pakistani in the West and you left, like you have no right to talk about. I can feel it. Like, you know, you, you can feel it. And it's kind of annoying because it's like, I didn't really have a say of where I ended up right? I just ended up here. Maybe some people do have a say, but there's this idea that like, if you leave your home country, you're a traitor, right? If you take that money outside, you're a traitor. I think it goes back to like how patriotic of a person you are. I feel like for me personally, because patriotism is not something that I really subscribe to, I, I don't see it that way. But I guess another example of that that's a little bit more lighthearted, you know, when you look at Jersey Shore, for example, right? Like Italian people were like, yo, we reject them. They're not even full Italian. Some of them are not even full Italian. This does not represent Italian culture. And then, you know, same with Kardashians. We don't want them in Armenia. Get them out of here. They don't represent us. And so I feel like it's that same kind of thing. Like you guys are a watered down, weird version 
of us and we reject it because you're not authentic or like you're giving us a bad name with i mean these are reality shows okay that's like an extreme obviously reality tv can be extreme but i think that (laughs) but i think that it's a similar sentiment that like people of the country that you immigrated from uh kind of look down on you in that sense that you're just like who are you you know i'm sorry you don't belong here and and the thing is people who live in that country can't really understand the struggles that third culture kids face and as well as like the people who immigrate right like even when i look at my parents my parents have their own struggles as immigrants it's not like they don't struggle with their own stuff like we 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 talk a lot about third culture kids but immigrants themselves have their own you know identity issues and their own stuff of like not feeling like they fully belong either place either because you know they've been gone for so long or whatever it may be or maybe their children are in one place but yeah i think that's that's one thing that i've come to terms with like that's that's it is what it is you know, um, people from Pakistan are going to look at me that way. And there's nothing that I can do about that. And I think that was something that I struggled with a little bit because I was like, I'm not Pakistani enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. And, you know, I think I've come to terms with the fact that I will never understand what it's like to grow up there. I will never understand what it's like to live there for a long time or whatever it may be. And so there are limitations of how I've interact and view the culture and vice versa so it's just something you come to terms with you know what is it called clash of clash of civilizations it's ironic because it's like you're both you know but that goes into my next point and um, one of the things that you also come to terms with is that you are the process you are living through subcultures being created we are the ones creating these subcultures you know what is what does it mean to be pakistani in the west you know i get a lot of comments like don't use the word desi what is this oh you're just lumping everything together i mean i know that they're not the same thing people here are not stupid it's not that they don't understand that people who don't live in the u.s or don't live in some sort of immigrant community or live in a place that's like heavily populated with said ethnicity don't understand that the the lines between these things do get i don't want to say blurred but when you are the minority in a place you interact with people that you probably wouldn't have interacted with in your home country if that makes sense like i don't see how i would have married someone from hyderabad india if i lived in pakistan like there was a much lower chance that that would happen if i didn't live in the states right because When you're in the States, the difference between me and my husband, like it just, it narrows. And so people getting mad about these terms, it's like, it's fine if it's not for you, but for people living outside, you know, there are only so many words that you can use to describe certain things. And I think that also comes from like people who want to keep their national identities apart. Yes, it's fine. It's like, okay, Pakistani, Indian, those are two separate things. Me and my husband understand that those are two separate things. We have two different cultures. Like, it's very clear. And to some people, they're just like, oh, they're two Desi people who got married. We are different. That's just something that you come to terms with that, especially like me making this channel and finding my audience or whatever it is. It's like, I can't please everybody because not everybody gets it. Not everybody understands. And that's fine. It is what it is. But yeah, as as cringy as it may feel sometimes, because like I saw something... I saw a guy who took a bag of rice, like, you know, this basmati rice and like turned it into a jacket. And that's really cool and all. But as as I was watching it, I was like, that's like somebody taking like Kraft macaroni and cheese (laughs) or like something that's like very American branded and taking that bag or box and being like, look at my new purse. It's hilarious, right? But yeah, we're part of this like meshing of cultures and so it's gonna look weird and it's gonna be interesting and it's not gonna make sense and there are gonna constantly be new words describing changing things and i'm not saying that they see is a word that people in the u.s invented that oh, i've got I, I can already like anticipate what people are gonna come for me in the comments i'm just saying like you're always gonna be rejected by your own people and you know what's ironic you know what petty to is coming in the thing that gets me though And maybe I could be wrong about this, but I get annoyed because I'm like, but y'all accept white people who appreciate culture with open arms. They all come back saying, best hosts in the world. Pakistan is my favorite place. Best people, best food. But do you treat your relatives like that when they come from, uh, you know, I'm not saying this about my own family. 
this is not a jab at my own family i'm just saying do you do you keep that same energy when you see somebody who comes from england or from the u.s or australia like do, do you hold that same all right so my next thing that you come to terms with you will teeter-totter between loving and hating your culture it will always be a constant back and forth some sort of equilibrium some sort of osmosis all of the things it's going to be you're going to love your culture and you're going to be challenged you're going to be challenged by the things that you hate and vice versa same with like the the culture that you you grow up in or the you know the place that you grow up in as well and sometimes you just take pieces of all of those things and decide what you like and what you don't want to continue on for future generations but it's something that can get really confusing because you don't know who you are. <laughs> like you can have a really deep love for both and you can also have a really deep hate for both. And to have all of those things at the same time, it can get messy, you know? And I guess to, to put words to what I'm trying to explain, you can really appreciate the culture, the beauty, the artistry of, you know, your culture. And some things even like hospitality, family values, that kind of thing. You know, those are things that I feel like are very beautiful about Pakistani culture in particular. But on the other hand, you could say those are also not so great things. Maybe the focus on certain things in family is toxic. And maybe, you know, there are some things in American culture that make more sense to you. However, on the other side, you know, American culture is very individualistic. I don't think that it's superior to some eastern culture but vice versa and so it's like it's like you constantly have these like two kind of pitted against each other oh god but you know you're a human being you have the capacity to hold s this much you know emotion okay and so when you're constantly like i hate it i love it i hate it i love it da, 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 da. there's a point at which you just gotta like accept things but yeah that's something that i feel like i've come to terms with another thing that i have come to terms with like you are who you are and you have to accept yourself because if you leave it up to other people to accept you, you're going to be lost forever because people will never accept you. I can tell you from just from who I am, for example, like, you know, just from being on the internet, the comments that I get, I can't ever win. And then, you know, I've made other videos about like growing up around other cultures who also reject you that are outside of, you know, American culture. So, or who look down on you. And so if you leave your identity up to other people and let people tell you where you fall, what your hierarchy is, what your rank is, you know, what they believe you are, you're going to go crazy. You really are. And so I think, you know, what, what you have to come to terms with is that you just need to know you. You need to know who you are on a spiritual level, which is something that we talk about about in another video that i'm making i'm really excited about this interview she she brought this up so stay tuned for that but um what was discussed was that you know focusing on a spiritual identity kind of like blows all that stuff away or like makes it less important so yeah that's one thing that you kind of come to terms with or i've come to terms with as well that like maybe none of this really matters all is all that much like it matters in the context of here and now and some days it's worse than others but in the grand scheme of things i am a human identity you know what i mean that's my identity i think like where we're so big on like categorizing and putting labels and all that kind of stuff and it's like i mean i'm not a water bottle that we're labeling and pa branding and packaging like i'm not freaking a spice jar you know do i need to be labeled or can you just open the top and smell it and be like oh I know what this is. I feel a little hint of this and a little hint of that. Right, right, Sneem. Good job. That was a great way to conclude this. My last point that I want to leave with, your feelings, your anger, your confusion at times, frustration, it's valid. Feel it. Feel the feelings. Don't let them make you bitter. Don't let them, like control your life i think everybody at some point has a moment in their life where they're like what the hell's going on who am i when you're a third culture kid sometimes a lot of that is because it's like exaggerated because of you know what you are and your place in the world and i guess the lack thereof whatever it's okay to feel all those things but just understanding that these are also like kind of just worldly things that have been created to describe whatever point in time we're at and maybe it's not who you are deep 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 down in and sometimes i will be honest though i feel like this youtube channel has kind of helped me it's kind of been therapeutic in a sense because i feel like the more i've done research the more i have 
talk to other people, the more that I receive feedback in the comments and all that kind of stuff, I really feel like it's helped me understand where I fall and, and come to terms with a lot of these things as well. Because I'm like, one, I'm not alone in this. Number two, maybe I don't need an answer. Maybe it is what it is and that's fine. Yes. And that's how I'm going to conclude the video because like I said in the beginning, there is no conclusion. <laughs> so this kind of stuff is hard to conclude because there's no conclusion. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, this is all a work in progress. We're going to get, you know, more movement on this. I want to get some more content out. Still figuring this channel out, but I appreciate you guys who've stayed along for the ride. Okay, that's all I had to say. Tazzy Faye. Oh God, out. Bye.